Hey guys, it's your old pal Andrew Ambrose, and I have returned for another episode of Andrew Reviews. Thank you, thank you. Now for today's episode, I'll be taking a look at an awesome but pretty obscure arcade game known as Pepper 2. Originally released back in 1982 by perhaps the weirdest mainstream video game company in the history of the universe, Exidy. Now I know what you're thinking, Andrew, if the game's called Pepper 2, where the hell's Pepper 1? Well, the answer is that there isn't a Pepper 1. According to Atari H Forum's user Tempest, the 2 in Pepper 2 refers to the main character Pepper having a split personality and not to any sort of sequel. Then why don't they just call it Pepper 1 Half? You know, like Rama 1 Half. Oh, but I get it, Rama 1 Half didn't exist until 5 years after Pepper 2, but you think that the boys at Exidy would come up with a less confusing name. Nonetheless, the game is really awesome, and I'm going to show you why as we take a look at the only home version of Pepper 2 ever made, the 1983 ColecoVision version. Once again, original hardware won't be used for this review since I don't have an original ColecoVision console. But why would I want to have an original ColecoVision console anyway? It barely works anymore, the joysticks are total ass, and the AC adapter is of a goddamn behemoth size. What the fuck were they thinking? Luckily though, I have access to the ColecoVision flashback console from 2014, which features 60 ColecoVision games, including Pepper 2. Either way, it'll only be a matter of time till my mom gets me a Collector Vision Phoenix console for Christmas. But seriously, Mom, all I want for Christmas is a Collector Vision Phoenix. I don't, you, you don't have to get anything else. You don't even have to get me the new Genesis Mini. I just want my Collector Vision Phoenix. Is, is it that too much to ask? But until then, we still have this thing. So let's review Pepper 2 for the ColecoVision. You play as an angel named Pepper who must move around through four interconnected mazes consisting of rooms surrounded by zipper tracks that he must zip up. In order to zip up each maze, Pepper has to zip up the tracks surrounding each individual room in the maze, one or two at a time. Pepper also has to deal with roaming eyes, small monsters that enter the mazes through any of the exits conveniently placed at the top, bottom, left, and right sides of the maze. The roaming eyes can kill Pepper by simply touching him, but Pepper can also combat these foes by zipping up a room with a pitchfork on it, causing the colors to change and Pepper to turn from an angel into a devil. This is where Pepper's aforementioned split personality comes into play, hence the name Pepper 2. Once in his devil mode, Pepper can now eliminate the roaming eyes by touching them, similar in fashion to when Pac-Man eats the monsters after gobbling an energizer. Also similar to Pac-Man is the fact that Pepper will only stay in his devil mode for a few seconds before reverting to his anal. Did I just said anal? Fuck. Pepper will only stay in his devil mode for a few seconds before reverting to his angel form. I think the colors changing during this part of the game is a genius idea because the human brain responds to color changes and keeps the player on their toes. The only other game I can think of off the top of my head that also does this is Atari Centipede from 1980, where the entire plate field's color palette changes once a stage is completed. In addition to the pitchfork rooms, there are also hammer and safety pin rooms that award 910 bonus points when Pepper zips them up. 910? That's an unusual amount of bonus points. See, I told you Exidy was weird. But be careful when zipping up rooms, because if you go back on zipped up tracks that don't enclose already zipped up rooms, you'll unzip those tracks. This can get frustrating if you think you zipped up a room, but it turns out you actually went back on a track you previously zipped up. Once all the rooms in the maze have been zipped up, the screen will flash and you'll get 7,000 bonus points while the song Zippity Doodah from the Disney movie Song of the South briefly plays. Then you'll be able to move on to a different maze by using any of the four exits. These exits can also be used before a maze is zipped up if you want to leave and move on to a different maze. This is great because if the situation gets too hot and heavy, you can just leave and come back later after spending time zipping up the other mazes, and if you wait long enough before returning to the maze you were just in, all the enemies won't respond and you'll get a head start. And, if you zip up all four mazes in the stage, you'll get 7,000 bonus points and in addition, 15,000 super bonus points and an extra life. Cool! When you start the second stage, the game becomes more difficult because the stage will sometimes disappear. Otherwise, the game is just the same as before, but at higher difficulties in true arcade fashion. 
At this point, I'd like to mention that the roaming eyes aren't the only type of enemy that you'll have to face in this game. The only reason I haven't mentioned the other type of enemy that you'll have to face is because I first have to talk about the differences between each game option. I'm pretty sure most of us are familiar with this by now, but for those who aren't, I'll explain. Most, if not all, ColecoVision games had game options that the player could select using the ColecoVision controller's numeric keypad before beginning play. Each game option determined how the game would be played out, mostly in terms of starting lives, number of players, and difficulty. In the case of Pepper 2, game option 1 starts you off with 5 lives and only has you dealing with roaming eyes. Meanwhile, game options 2 through 4 give you only 3 lives to start and add in the second type of enemy called Zipper Rippers. These guys are assholes. They're faster than the roaming eyes and they rip up any zipped up tracks not enclosing already zipped up rooms. And when Pepper becomes a devil, the Zipper Rippers can't even be eliminated. But they do stay still and can't kill Pepper. And while I'm on the subject, I think I should mention the pitchfork rooms that are found in the center of some of the mazes, because those are special. This room's pitchfork will sometimes change into a green box, and when Pepper zips up the room when it has the green box, the zipper rippers will momentarily vanish from the maze after Pepper turns back into an angel. You may have noticed by now that the game is very similar to Konami's Amidar from 1981, since both Amidar and Pepper 2 involve enclosing rooms in a maze while avoiding enemies. The difference, however, is that Amidar has two types of stages that alternate with each passing stage, while Pepper 2's stages all follow the same formula. Another difference between the two games is the way you enclose rooms. In Amidar, rooms are enclosed by either collecting all the balls and closing them in Stage 1, or painting around each room in Stage 2. Pepper 2 uses the aforementioned zipper gimmick. Both games, however, are different enough from each other to be considered their own game, but going back to Pepper 2, I can't really speak any foul of it. The graphics are nice and colorful, the music and sounds are lively, and the game keeps you on the edge of your toes. Overall, Pepper 2 is still very fun to play, even in 2019, whether it be the original arcade version or the home console version here on the ColecoVision. My oh my, what a wonderful day. And what a wonderful game. Pepper 2 has all the qualities of a great classic arcade game from the early 80s. Colorful graphics, vibrant sounds, and fast, addictive gameplay. And all those qualities are represented very well here in the ColecoVision version, which is great considering that this is the only official home port of the game ever made. The original Coleco cartridge can be found for pretty cheap on eBay, with loose copies going for around $5, complete copies going for around $9, and new copies going for around $19 according to RarityGuide.com. And, as I mentioned before, it was included in the ColecoVision Flashback console, along with 59 other ColecoVision games, so you have a good amount of options in terms of playing Pepper 2. So Pepper 2 for the ColecoVision gets an approval from me. Thank you everybody for watching, I'm Andrew Ambrose, and as always, I'll catch you later.